Was that Rosemary? Okay. <clears throat> Call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Hamden Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health being held in the Townhouse Auditorium, February 26th to 2024. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> is anyone, uh, we're recording the meeting, is anyone recording the meeting other than us? Well, is, but he is telling us this is the last meeting. Really? No. This is your last meeting, Dalton? Unmute, Dalton. Right. Yep, this is my last meeting. I've accepted a job as a, a digital content producer for Fox 61 in Connecticut. So I'm going to start that next week. So I might be back as a correspondent, though. I might still cover you guys. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you so much. Um, minutes? Yep. Two seconds. Yeah, you're a second. This yeah. is National Grid Petitions for... Place the underground conduit at the, the corner of Summers Road and, and the Allen Street. And for him. Oh, you put it in the. You put it in the uh, Gaming Commission yeah. discussion yeah. of the mitigation money, able license renewal. On the school condition thing, I tie in bond, see what's happening. Uh, Yvonne is out on medical for a while. Oh, and Craig okay. is following up on it at this point. Craig right. uh, French. All right. Fire department generator. Mm -hmm. And they approve that. Motion to approve January 2nd minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, January 29th, 2024. My report. The um, update on the municipal vulnerability project. And uh, then we have the town administrator uh, decision. Uh, Water Commission report. Some some repairs at Green Meadows. Uh, use of the building. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next item on our agenda is a uh, hearing for a new uh, alcoholic beverage license at 5 Allen Street. I'll open the hearing. Uh, we have the application here. Just to verify, we've notified the abutters. I have the certified copies of the abutters notice. Uh, we have a copy of the advertisement in the newspaper saying that we're holding the hearing. Um, we have the abutters list here. The planning board has approved the site. Um, on January 10th, the planning board voted to approve the site. Uh, and uh, let's see, we have the application here. We have the, the $200 fee has been submitted to the, the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. We have the new retail application, manager application. The Corey authorization, the proof of citizenship, the supporting financial records, the abutters notification, the advertisement, the floor plan, the copy of the legal right to occupy lease or deed, and the management agreement. With that said, I will have the applicant or his representative come forward. You're going to come up here and. Yeah. Still not what? Yeah. No, he hasn't paid that. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Kelly. I'm the attorney for the petitioner. Uh, to, to my left is uh, Michael White, and uh, behind him is uh, Mr. Robert Gosman. They're the proposed owners. Um, Start with Mr. White. Uh, he's a retired corrections officer uh, from the state of uh, Connecticut. Now he's in his retirement. He's looking to do something else, not just be retired all day. This is uh, he's been lifelong friends with Mr. Gossman, and this is uh, what he's going to do uh, now with his retirement. 
Mr. Gossman, uh, who will be the proposed uh, majority owner and also the proposed manager, uh, has owned uh, other bars in other jurisdictions. He's been manager of other bars in other jurisdictions and has had a clean record with both the, the local and with the ABCC. Um, uh, they're both tip certified, as will every single person who uh, works there. That'll be a condition of employment. I know we gave you a little bit of a presentation last time he was here, but I'll just kind of just give it a short version. You have the business plan in front of you, so you know that uh, he's looking to do it's a small space to begin with uh, it's about approximately 2500 square feet or so and then when you back out the kitchen and the bathrooms there's not a the, the occupancy of these big will be pretty low uh, we know the town officially said that but um it's based on a number of different factors but it's it's going to be um, fairly tight in there to begin with which is what they want they don't want a big spot uh, the focus will be on food and infusion type drinks kind of a different uh, type of feel um, kind of a casual area they'll do those types of smoke drinks where you, you make a drink but it smokes um, different type of cocktails like that yeah have you seen those uh, uh, I think I've seen it on bar I'm a shot in a beer guy okay. <laughs> okay. Well, they'll have those too they'll yeah, <laughs> we'll have those for you but then mostly they'll be focusing on some other spots uh, some other types of things so the, the proposed menu is there as well we had a chance to look at that but the focus will be on food Mr. Gossman uh, wherever he's been has had a, a kitchen at his disposal and has had great reviews from all the customers uh, They'll be uh, looking to be open. Uh, they'll be generally closed Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be 4 to 12. Sunday, he wants to do kind of a brunch from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, when you go there, uh, certainly every single minute they'll be open, you'll see these, uh, this, these gentlemen uh, there. Uh, Mr. Gosman is a hands-on operator. They don't expect to have more than a handful of people working for them anyway. Uh, they'll be the kind of, uh, Mr. Gosman will be the head employee there and in charge of everyone, and he's been Managing, he's managed several bars uh, for the last, you know, 15 or 16 years. This has been his vocation. Um, that's all he's done. Is this will be his full-time work? Are you planning to have any entertainment there? Thank you. I should have brought that up. He may, uh, <laughs> the only entertainment they'll have there will be some background music. You know, they might play over that you could you could listen to while you were eating. Maybe perhaps um, you know a single person, maybe for St. Patrick's Day or something like that, to something light. It's going to be it's kind of a small place. Anything loud would not be receptive to uh, people eating dinner. So you would come back for entertainment license. Yeah, we didn't apply for that on, on purpose. We want to get in this first and see how that goes, and then we'll mm -hmm. come back and apply for the entertainment license in the next couple of weeks and months. Do they still make jukeboxes, Don? I'm not sure. <laughs> If it's called an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, no jukebox. No. No. You can still get them where they sell pinball machines. Okay. What about the what about the parking? I mean that lot seems to always be full anyhow. Well that's it is, but we met the planning board's requirements for the space. But since the new owners of the plaza, they added all that parking in the back, which is actually pretty close to us so it's you know on the side in the back by no, you know, the is that lighted back there I guess know. it is yeah. i'm sorry what were, what were your both your names again you got robert gossman robert michael white so you, you presented them as always somebody's going to be on premise running the, you're both are going to co-own the place co-manage co-owner co mr gossman will be the manager he'll be there every, every okay. minute uh, Mr. Uh, White is retired and, it, you know, it'll be in and out a lot of times. So you probably see him most of the time, but Mr. Mm -hmm. Gossman, every minute they're open, you'll see him there. Okay. He's the name on the license? He's the yeah, name license, mine. exactly. Yeah. Have you gone around to the other businesses, establishments, just to introduce yourself, say this is what our plan is and, you know, kind of... No, but the, the landlord did, CJ. CJ did? Yeah. Okay. I have one issue. You owe us thirty-seven fifty for your dog fine. <laughs> we'll take a check tonight if you got it. Okay. Give this to your attorney. Make sure that gets paid properly. Okay. Is there? Uh, you have anything else? No, no. Any other questions? Not the moment. Is there anyone here, a butter, is there anyone in opposition? Anyone on Zoom in opposition? Or have wants to ha have anything to say? Okay. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. What is the establishment going to be labeled? Are we issuing the license under the establishment name or owner's name? And is that the establishment. establishment name? And the establishment, do you have a name picked? Yeah, the black sheep. The black sheep? Yep. 
<laughs> Explain to me the fusion thing again. <laughs> tell, them about the, tell them about the smoky drinks. Oh, I, I mean, watch bar more natural. It's it's just for flavor and more more or less for show. Yeah. Was there anything during the planning board hearings that needed to be addressed that you were, were supposed to work on, correct, change your business plan at all, or anything no, like that? Nothing. Met the requirements, okay. flying colors. It was uh, just for the health department. They wanted a bunch of certificates, which I already have. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Gary Weiner checked the septic system. We're yep. over there for yep. the yep. workload. Yep, that's all been approved. He, I gave the letters. Yeah, I have, I have them all here. Yeah. I will say I agree with Don there, but I have a concern about the parking. And I know what you're saying, you're doing the math and there are the extra spaces out back. Yeah. I don't think they're that convenient to it. Like Don said, we go by it on weekends and it seems to be pretty full. You're replacing a restaurant that was there that was primarily a takeout establishment uh -huh. with a sit down thing. So it might be something that I'm sure the math worked out. I'm just not sure the convenience works out with transitioning across the front of the mini mall and up behind the Dunkin' Donuts, the parking and back. Perhaps that's something that the, the owner of Mini Mall might say, look, we need more employees to park in back. We'll do better lighting so that the customers can stay in front, perhaps. Yeah, that's internally. Like, I'd make sure that the employees are parking right. in the back, yeah. No, it might not be that safe. Yeah, I'd rather have... Walking through uh, the drive through you know, to get... I'd rather have a customer out front and the sure. employees in back, you know. I would move to uh, issue a liquor license to the Black Sheep establishment at the Allen Street location, um, subject to town rules, bylaws, and 3750. And ABC, ABC regulations. And certification from the ABC. Yeah, we have to send the ABC. Right. Now, now, the next step is, you would know this, right? It goes to the ABCC, then they investigation, mm -hmm. and then it comes back to us, and we have to issue within a certain amount of time, seven days, I think it is. Yeah, you have to sign it. Yeah, yeah okay. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Check. Dan. Are you for a check? Get the take cash? <laughs> no, we can't take cash. Not, uh, it's not. not on camera. He's not, not, not on camera. No. <laughs> Next item on our agenda is the budget review of the police department. All right. Cool. Cool. That? It's large print. It's a presentation. Is it the presentation? Yeah, large print. It's only a three hour presentation. All right, what do we got? Good evening. So, I believe you have it in front of you. Please. I do. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> what we have is uh, starting off with uh, chief salary, uh, no increase currently. There's a negotiations going on. Uh, general salaries, um, we uh, have uh, gone up from uh, obviously last year. You can see a little bit because due to the step raise uh, that's included and then also um, the IT, which is a contract uh, language for the percentages there. Uh, career incentive has gone up uh, because of uh, our newest hires, Quinville, to get the actual Quinville. Uh, election for town management meetings, the state election this year for us to have uh, coverage. Uh, towing clerk, there is a zero across the board. Training uh, stays the same as asked by the advisory. Cruiser maintenance stays the same. Uh, we added a new cruiser uh, in the line, which mm. is uh, 70000 Either we go with an SUV or the uh, F F one hundred and fifty pickup, which was been asked of uh, by the men. Uh, we did a little research around the area. Um, the F one hundred and fifty pickup would be good for us if we were to get rid of the SUV. Uh, usually, when we go to firearms or if we have any type of a situation in town, you can bring um, different detour signs, barricades, mm -hmm. or something like that with the back there. Uh, if we go to another SUV that's going to be smaller than the Tahoe, uh, we don't really have the space in the back uh, for for what we'd like to utilize. The pricing is very close, so it's at seven. The upfit in the boat, uh, and then for the cruisers itself, is about two, three thousand dollars difference in the uh, cruiser. Uh, it's about one fifty SUV. The upfitting is, is, is uh, 
makes a, makes a difference would be around 70 there. Um, Before you go on, just a quick question about the SUV versus the F-150. Um, would that be just a one-time F-150 or will you be looking to replace all the cruisers with F-150s down the just road? Just a one-time. Just a one-time. Just time. a one-time. And, and, and due to the fact, like I said, because it's a utility vehicle for mm -hmm. us, the smaller vehicles, um, you know, we go up to Munson, we load in the targets and all of our mm -hmm. firing stuff. And then if, uh, I would also look to possibly have that vehicle utilized by uh, just supervisors also. Yeah, it's not, is it a crew cab thing where you would have the backs, if you needed to have a prisoner, you would have the back sectioned off? Correct. Okay. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be uh, uh, enclosure. Enclosure in the back okay. there, yes. Mm -hmm. um, we would go down next to uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, boosted and are asking for a new um, block, nine millimeters, um, for our department. Um, that, that comes to us at around $20,000 um, fee. Uh, they'd be taking a trade in of our 45s that we currently have. And, uh, Building uh, maintenance and oh, move through. There's a couple different expenses that we had added in there. One for phone support, uh, and then there was another one that uh, we had in there. We had some uh, meetings and dues that have gone up, and a couple of things have gone up. The WIMWAC uh, has gone up with ten percent, seventy uh, three seventy five from three hundred dollars, and general expenses have, have uh, has gone up. That seems a pretty huge increase. What's the Big increase for general expenses. So we've got uh, we're, uh, come back to our back end here. So that boost is the SBA infrastructure. So technically, it's the 28 that uh, they went up on the 23. So the SBA is included in that. I know it's a different line item, but we have to include it into that the general expenses. And that's what we did also last year. So that's on our communications page. Our back the SBA infrastructure, two thousand three hundred eighty-four dollars for twelve months, leasing of the towers. This the towers. Oh yeah. Village Drive. Which one's that in? What page is this? So we're under communications. If you go to uh, general, it's after the general expense totals, and you come into the communications. I'm looking for it. I got building expenses. Five, six from the back. I got equipment. Twenty-eight, six only. Called communications? No, I don't have a sheet. No. no. We've got building and maintenance, and that was the last one. Yeah, I don't have communications. That was no communications. So that would have been the increase in the. In the uh, so it's just the tower lease has gone up? Yeah. Is there a reason for the tower lease going up? Yeah. Correct. Just contract. Part of the contract? Yeah. It's part of the contractual? Yeah. $20,000? And that's based up 20 grand. It's based off, yes. So technically, it's what, 3% to increase it went up to 12 months. Oh, it's good. What are these now? 21. So 3% on 21 wouldn't be $20,000. No, no, I'm saying 2100. I'm saying that. So we're going from 2100 to 20,000? 20, no, 2100 to 2300 times the 12 gets us at 28,000. A month, gotcha. It's, my, it's monthly, yeah, the monthly fees. But that, that, Hold it. it went up from how much a month to how much a month? So this sleep, okay, it's a total of 28, though. We didn't pay the 28 before? Yeah, that, yeah, well, no, 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 that's that's the, that's our increase right there. That's why our, it's- No, I see the, it's 28 times 12 months. What do we pay this year? This year? How much per month? don't have because uh, I mean I see that number yeah, but it must have yeah, come from yeah. something up to 28 yeah it did uh, I believe it was the 21 I'm thinking that's what I was saying the 2100 okay so that went up 200 times 12 and I'm just looking at no I'm looking at general expenses I'm talking about going from 91 to 20. 20 right that's right so then you add that 20 
that, so, so now for the purposes of that line item that we added into that line there for the general expenses, but that comes actually under police communications. But it's in the, it's, it, so our police communications separates that 28,000 from the general expenses, but it's all included in our budget for the general expenses. See what I'm saying? In our green sheet that comes down, comes across, we separate the. So was it a separate line before? Yes. That's our question. Yes, okay. that's, that's the separate line before, right? So last it was 27, it was 27 as a separate one. It was a separate one. We, we, in our police budget, we put it in the same line under general expenses. So now you move this 27 right. into our. Right. Right. Okay. So that's why, that's why. That makes more that sense, makes I think. Sense. If, but that's what we've always done. No, I'm just. Yeah. But if we always done it, then how was there a $30,000 increase? Right. It couldn't have been done that way before. It was a separate line. Separate and, line. Yeah. So. Is that what we want to do? Yeah, the question. Well, because it's police and fire communication, right? Right. That's for the tower, for the, for the fire and the police. That's my point. Police. I mean, it was separate before because so it was we want to keep it separate. public safety as opposed to. Okay. Yeah, we want to yeah. keep it separate. All right. Yeah. But that's, um, probably we're, that out of that's probably sure. where we're going to have to put this 62.5 for dispatch. Well, I'm kind of wondering why the dispatch number isn't in here. We don't know where to put it. <laughs> Thank you. I you know, mean, did you put, do we put we it? Don't have do a line separate. We, line we did have a line before the dispatch salary means. This is our first. I think it was probably. Salary. It was probably so had, oh, 03. Yeah, for it's salary right now, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, we had a whole budget category for dispatch, mm -hmm. and then various expenses under that, which is eliminated. So you want to make it a separate thing in public safety because it's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And who's bringing that number four? Bringing that number four, the yeah, probably. Okay. So I would back the 28 then out of that. Yeah, right, okay. back the 28 out of that. And then we'll put it under, we'll put it under fire and police communication. We'll add the dispatch in there. Same one it was, and it went up. Yeah. Roughly. It, yeah, it makes sense. A couple hundred bucks yeah. together. We'll increase the rental fee in their tower at the dump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Exactly. Is the is the uh, dog officer's car included in your maintenance? Is it, is it what? Is it the dog officer, does she have a she has a cruiser, computer? but that falls in between I mean I've been doing inspections for her yeah. been doing regular maintenance for my maintenance budget, but she doesn't really have a location for that particular car so right. uh, i wasn't sure where we would put that so it, it, i ask you is that part of your cruiser maintenance no. now no and that's not part of this no but i added the cruiser maintenance that i have here now i have done helped her but her car doesn't fall under my contingency how is it being paid for now i mean but, okay. but uh, the cruiser maintenance. why is it not under your maintenance don't know. Never. I mean, she falls. Her activities are going to fall under me. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But her budget doesn't reflect anything for cruiser maintenance or anything. So I just assumed to pay for any issues that she has. Mm -hmm. Are you able to cover it? I have been able to. But been it's too. a good assumption. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. How much you spend on overtime a year? Um, hover around maybe a hundred thousand. Is there some way we can corral that? So we uh, we currently have uh, in place uh, a cap, which is uh, through the contract, which does uh, assist us in in corralling it. Uh -huh. uh, it's a, it's it's five shifts currently, eight hours, which is a forty hour first rate of, rate of refusal. Uh, if we can maintain that, uh, I still. Uh, am a believer that our reserve force has not uh, depleted. Uh, maybe down the road, we might start to lose more after 2027. When we get a full, full certification of all the reserves that are out there. They bridged and now they can continue working. Uh, but I've actually, over the last several months, I've had three, four applications uh, come of officers, uh, reserve officers looking to work. So uh, to answer your question, uh, I think if we keep keeping a cap in place on our budget that we do uh, and utilize our reserves when we can. It's going to uh, help it a great deal. Back to your cruiser maintenance, and I don't mean to nickel and dime it, but 
What is golf? Golf is the oil blue filter. Uh, is G. Uh, that uh, comes from. Okay. But yes. I'm looking at the different yes. price. You're, one of your newer cars. One of your newer cars is six twenty-five, and all the rest of them are three hundred. Why would that be high? So, so go back to the question. Yeah. So the the Tahoe yep. at the bottom, the twenty twenty-one, right, is like double the price of the other ones. Why is the it's a, it's a bigger vehicle? So it's a Chevy Tahoe, which but is so the one so is the one above it. Right. So is the one car it's two not being utilized as much though. So the newest car that we had, which was the uh, six twenty-five, when we first got that, we didn't have to do all that major maintenance. The other ones we had to do more maintenance to it. Those are floating figures, really. Yeah, I just we're see, not, yeah, so we're not two nineteen right Tahoes that are three seventy-five. Yeah. The newer Tahoe is six twenty-five. Yeah. Is it because it's newer? It's newer and it costs more to uh, change the oil and and uh, the tires are bigger and. Um, well, that's why that's the tire expenses there. It's, and nickel and diamond just seems over the place. Well, you know, and, and that numbers are, through our maintenance is, is a floating number. So one cruiser may be a little bit less and then a newer cruiser. So to, to make the numbers work up, what we most recently had for most expenses mm -hmm. is why you're seeing that. Let's just start with the defibrillators. Defibrillators are all in, brand, uh, the new defibrillators are in, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they've been out, uh, put into the cruisers. The fire department has theirs. Uh, we were uh, assessed an initial fee for uh, child infant pads, um, and that fee needs to be back out. We will get a full invoice for the amount that we spent on the defibrillators. I think it was 23004 uh, at the uh, special town meeting. Uh, once they get our old defibs, check all the serial numbers. Uh, they'll send us out an invoice. Uh, well, we did receive equipment. It's in, it's in. So, so you received it, it's, it's in use? Yes. Okay. Were you able to cut that lawn maintenance budget? So um, we uh, are going to have to look at that depending on what happens as we move forward after June. I still have to meet with Gary. Uh, and uh, we had talked about the sprinklers and all that. So, um, what do you mean, meet with Gary? Well, I, you had mentioned if I would meet with him and talk to him, is there anything we can do to continue him or not continue him? Well, you can't continue. You need, well, I don't know if you can drill the well. You need to cut that line to the senior center for the sprinklers. That's an absolute. The DEP has given us an order. Okay. And it was pretty clear. I think we forwarded the information on that. They weren't, it wasn't a, hey, would you? It was do it by this date. And we sent it a letter, so we were in compliance with the order. And then it will be discontinued, we told them, by May 1st. I didn't, okay. It was in the letter. Okay. So then after that, we talked about the potential that there is another well on site. Perhaps that could be connected to provide sprinkling. You know, but there's not really a lot of a give on the other part. Okay. So these when, if they wanted our opinion, they would have asked for it. Right, Don? What? DEP, if, if they wanted our opinion, yeah, they would have asked for it. They yeah, they didn't. Did, did um, you maybe lose my chain of thought. Oh, how's your free ad issue? So, um, it's uh, it's holding currently because they were able to find the, uh, the issue. We need a new unit uh, replaced. There's actually seven units up up above uh, in the ceiling to heat our police department, one of them has to be replaced. But to find that uh, leak, we uh, have a good amount of expense that we have to uh, pay, uh, and then to pay for the unit itself. Um, so we are at, we have heat currently, and uh, we are going to move forward to get the new unit put in place, and the heating and air conditioning will continue to work as it has in the past. And you can absorb that in this year's budget, you think? I'm hoping. That's the fifteen thousand you sent over today. Yes. yes. Now it's been suggested by some that you eliminate the clerk position. Is that a viable option to save money? I don't believe so. Clerks there Monday through Friday, every alter alternating Sunday, uh, sa alternating Saturdays, works eight to two. Is our record uh, record access officer? As we have a records access officer for the town, uh, he is our uh, clerk uh, that does that for the police department. 
uh, does our reports, uh, does our firearms license to carry uh, applications and meets with the individuals um, along with myself uh, and as a face to him, the police department probably agree that I think uh, by losing dispatchers, not having somebody there, they at least still have someone there. It's been mentioned that uh, people are still uh, very interested in seeing a face there and uh, not having a dark station uh, right around the clock. Now, your figures, all your figures here for salaries, they don't include, I mean, we're in the process of negotiating with the union now, so that doesn't include any kind of correct or so, anything there or, correct. or any of the other so this budget that we have before things us, that they're asking for this budget that we have before us is uh nine is is straight up uh, with no no coal increases okay. so the 13 on the general salaries was due to something different or so we have uh, a step raise uh the step raises that come into a couple of the officers okay. along, along with a percentage of a contract which is a five percent that we have uh, through the IT, so it's contractual along with the step raises. For next year's budget, coming so so yeah. the way it affects it is we middle of this year we have step raises that come in every so so yes we have a step raise that comes into play for the officers or new new officers that were hired mm -hmm. so that affects the next budget. Mm -hmm. So backing out the uh, the fire police radio thing, the budget really went up about uh, one hundred and twenty thousand, about eight percent. Without salary at this point, right. yeah. and that's not including bringing dispatch act back in. Right now, I realize quite a bit of that. Obviously, the majority of it is the cruise report, which was left out of last year's budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if it had been consistently in there, we wouldn't see such a big jump. And the reason right. why it wasn't consistently in there is because we went ahead and changed no, the location. But, right. yeah. but you're probably right. right. We wouldn't so see we that wouldn't feature. see that because yeah. the reason we left it in there all the time the is to keep it even. And so we did, right. usually we went with the cruiser every other year. No, within the special town meeting, we did every other year. We kept the cruiser in the standard budget, and every other year, we pick up the odd one, when, right. right? Then we went to every three years because the warranty was getting much yeah. better. So by leaving it out, this this is unfortunately what happens. Seventy grand for a, oh, a, definitely. We yeah. missed out on two years of, of yeah, technically two years of a cruiser, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other increase would be the uh, the Fire. hammers, mm -hmm. fireworks. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see how the negotiations go. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question, Chief. Um, the proposed proposal under discussion to create a lieutenant is not reflected here in this budget. No. How would that be handled? Um, great question. <laughs> With further discussion. With further discussion. Right. That's even better, Sam. Thank you. All right. Anything else on the budget? No. Thank you, Chief. What are you meeting with the advisory? March 11th. It's a great day. So this is you again. I'm up again. CMP Mima. That's why I uh, brought all these folders. <laughs> so uh, some plan has been being worked on. Uh, we've had a few meetings uh, over the year. Um, Frank's been very influential in, in reviewing and, and having a uh, I think in my back on, on what, reviewing what's going been going through Bob's been there. Uh, I, I sent it out a couple times for review of the board. I'm hoping that we all review the stage of, of, of that uh, document to be, uh, to be pinched. The last changes we did is we took uh, Bob out of there as a town administrator, no put our new one in there, and uh, we're just waiting for a uh, signing signing of the with that noise. <laughs> the, the, let me get back here. Let me go to my. He said something. Um, okay. Data points corrected. Yeah. So so actually, um, under uh, another review, I noticed there was some, some spelling issues and some date issues on on when uh, when that input was put in. The data points were uh, 
a suggestion pretty much from um, Scott Fleabaugh from MEMA, you know, going through infrastructure, different things to kind of have everything labeled and listed, phone numbers, addresses. Okay, so I'm looking at town buildings and I don't see the schools. I see provost there and I also don't see Becky's name and we talked about adding that back at the beginning. Yeah, there were special categories and they fell in a different category and the recommendation from MEMA was to keep them in there other special categories and not at this building. Okay. I, think, I think that's how we worded it because he said typically they would keep any of those buildings on a separate category. Right. And I, I didn't quite There was multiple it. tabs that came into data points. I, I'm hoping that they all forwarded to you most recently that changed. But previously, um, Craig and we, when I had sent them out, uh, I think you had had no problem getting into seeing them all and, and looking at them. It shows the different the buildings and it shows hazardous issues um, medical facility. Yeah, this one looks a little different than what I remember. I, I don't I guess I don't understand that point then. Well, public if it's this building only, then why is the fire chief and the highway inspector, the highway superintendent in it? Unless I thought this was a town wide emergency management plan. Town Library, would, Council on Aging, Town Library. Right. It's here. So why isn't her name up on the thing? She's always been on the, in the list there for signing off on the signature page. Are you part of the emergency management group? What are you asking? I don't know. I'm looking at the signature page and I'm trying to figure out. Oh, I don't see a signature page. Where's that? Oh, I'm looking in the final review document in the, uh, is it a different thing? In the laser fish. Under today's agenda? It says Mass, him and Mass CEMP final review 2 21 24. 22. There we go. 2 21 24. Yeah, I know the version oh, 1.1. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. is this not the current one? Yeah. It's what's in the fish now. Yeah, there's yes. the attachments. Yeah. Yeah, it's the current one. Yeah. Where, where, where are you looking at a signature screen in the front? And when you update it, there's Brian's name. It's the updated one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chair, town administrator, emergency manager, Dirk. And what are you uh, asking, John? I'm asking the signature page. I'm like trying to figure out why Becky's not there. We have Eva on there. Because as, as being a, in being in charge of the town records and all that, Becky's in charge of the senior center. But it's a town building that's in charge by the board of selectmen. Becky's not the one of the Eva's in charge of all of our records and all that for the town. So that's why she would be there, uh, not the town treasurer, I'm sure, the town clerk, town clerk. But there's there's no need to put Becky's name in there as being the director. She's in charge of her building per se, I get what you're saying, but her building's used as a shelter by me as the emergency management director. I take over for technically her. And I'm not sure why we would put her in there. I mean, I guess we can We've go We've had back. an emergency management group for a while. But this isn't this isn't for the group. It's, this is the, this is the- A community-wide emergency management system to ensure coordinated response to emergencies. And we're not gonna let the emergency- Which, the which is done by director. me as emergency management director. And we talk of records, which I'm not quite sure what happens and why this is part of the emergency. And we have Dick and Eva signing off on it. If you want to add, I'll, I'll no. we can, it's, it's our document. We can add anything you want. If that's if that's the board that wants to do it, then we then we add her add her in there. I mean, we're just not sure what particular job she'll have there, but we can we can add her in there. Under, under the town buildings, okay, we got maybe don't, we got town hall, highway department, historical commission, town library, council on aging, town library. But we don't have the two schools mm -hmm. and the police department or the fire department. We actually have well, shelters in the uh, well, the shelters. Right, and the schools used to be as part of the shelter. Yeah. yeah. So if you go through the document itself, it does show the police departments being the EOC, the yeah. central, central area of the operations. And it shows the shelters of the schools and all that. There's not just one location where each <coughs> point to be slighted. So. Yeah, so, I, no, so I'm looking at this data points thing that you sent. So I, that's what I was wondering. If that was added or? Yeah, this is the one that um, Scott Fleba had sent. and. 
I had the same questions too. Well, how come we don't have everything listed under town buildings? He's like, well, it's because it's listed under education or schools, or I don't remember the spe oh, specific see. category offhand, but it was already accounted for in another tab. Okay. okay. That was his reasoning behind that. Okay. I, I think it's, he's not on. I'm, I'm also saying. Okay, I see under public safety infrastructure, you have the fire department, the police mm -hmm. station. Right. Okay. Yes. So I don't want to beat the dead horse here, but I see the shelter list: Senior Center, Green Meadows, Barn Burgess. How about Barn Spell Rock? You have the overarching person in charge of the emergency. Yeah, so it's obviously not going to be running the shelter, so that person should be in the list. I don't see why we deviated from what we've had going the last three or four years, and you've been integral in keeping the emergency management group together and keeping that group as part of the list here. Maybe what you're saying is that this goes into a different facet of it with the documents as well, but I don't see why the exclusion goes there. I know what you're saying, it's a living document. If changes need to be made, we bring them up and make them. I mean, in Scott's defense, I mean, he has sent this to us for the last six months, multiple times, so. Mm, yes, <laughs> I have. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do with this? What are we doing with this? We I'll, I'll go back and correct it, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I'll get it back to you again. Do we need to sign off on it and vote yes. for it? I think, I think it'd be a good time to sign off on it with what we have, sure, and then some corrections I can get back to with the corrections. Okay. Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I think we're good right now. Any other questions? like to again suggest some amendments and bring the chief back so we can finalize it yeah okay. i agree all right i'd like to hear from the people that are on that list that they're good with the cemp plan we've got nine town officials listed there are they all good with this too i have uh, sent the plan out and well, I've asked maybe they review. read it as well as we do <laughs> I've, it's apparent. Plan, I've, sent Apparently not. I've asked for review mm -hmm. uh and then i've got the meeting to bring forward for the signage. So mm -hmm. I would hope every time I sent it out, I was going to get the review, yeah, and right. apparently I, I haven't. So <laughs> I sent you suggestions. Yeah. All right. Keep at it. Right on. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Hang around. For, hang yeah, around hang for around. the end. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, yeah. All right. Board of Registrar's appointment. Joanne Opitz. Joanne here. Oh, there she is. I like the sweater already. Oh, so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joanne. Hi. So you want to be a registrar of voters? Yes. Yeah. And your current affiliation? I'm enrolled. I'm enrolled. And, and she's got the, the town clerk has endorsed her and suggested we appoint her. Mm -hmm. So we, need, we need someone, so here we are. This would satisfy our requirements, right? This would satisfy our requirements. Right? Yeah. That's it? No. Well, no, we'll do need a vote, but it's a great board. My grandmother was actually chairman of the board back in the day. No. Wow. So. I'll move to appoint Joanne. Well, you're what are you looking at? To our board of registrars. <laughs> Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Sorry you. For, thank you for it. hanging around. Thank no, you for hanging around. The, you quizzing, be, the quizzing was pretty hard. I you got to be. You got to be sworn <laughs> in on that. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Fiber optic committee. What? I said we had a good feeling. But <laughs> nice. We're easy. Yeah. Fiber optic. So I'll start this one if that's okay. Yeah. Um, over the last couple of months, I've had a bunch of people reach out to me with a, a renewed interest in pursuing fiber optic within Hamden. Um, I think we're at the point now where we've had a lot of interest in the committee that I think it's rightfully so that the committee gets officially appointed rather than acting as an ad hoc committee. And um, there's four of the members here tonight that would like to be appointed. Um, we have nine in total. Um, some of them couldn't make it tonight due to prior commitments. But um, I would like to entertain them, the board, to uh, be nominated or appointed to the fiber committee as an official committee. 
He was on before that didn't want to con There was a couple people on that um, either moved out of town or didn't have the capacity to, to okay. fulfill it anymore. <clears throat> so I, I emailed the list of uh, individuals who would like to be appointed. There's nine, like I said. Um, you can run through those or you can ask questions to the, the gentleman. Well, I here. did miss a call from Dave Hayward, but hopefully it wasn't to remove his name. So. No, no, Dave couldn't make it tonight, so if he, maybe he couldn't get on Zoom. I'm guessing maybe that's what it is. Okay. So when you think about this fiber optic business, it was a pretty big shame for the residents of the town and the town itself when it didn't pass last year. Yeah. So you're in favor. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> you're ready to go forward? That's good. Do you feel we should bring it forward again this year? Or is that something you're going to explore? I think that's a, a position that the board would have to get together and decide, you know, what the best options were to move forward. Okay. So this will have to be a committee now. We need to post their meetings, right, which I think post. we were before anyhow with the yeah. ad hoc thing. Yeah. Um, you know, the board Craig, do you think there's a need for any expense, maybe for clerical that we could cover out of selectman expense? Um, there might be some need for minute taking or mm -hmm. you know some minor clerical stuff. Maybe if the if the board decides going maybe the mailers or anything mm -hmm. like that, I'm sure there might be a little bit incurred with it. Are you looking to step back from it a little bit? I'm looking to be the liaison to the board, okay, and have the board run itself and organize and kind of game plan and spearhead as a team. Who was on it before? Gina was on it. Gina was on. Um, yep, yeah, she's okay. unfortunately not going to be able to continue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I guess the question is, you know, who's going to be in charge? I mean, do they need clerical help? Should we look for somebody in the town hall that could devote a couple hours to help out? Or I think the first thing to do is to get the board organized, appointed, organized, get a first meeting scheduled, elect mm -hmm. a chair, and then see what the needs are for the committee. Okay. All right, so this list of names here, I mean, it's unfortunate we don't have everybody here, but you've personally spoken to everybody. I have. Okay. So we have, I'll make a motion to appoint John Plaster, Eric mm -hmm. Vander Leiden, Dave Hayward, Richard Muse, Joe Saletti, Brett Soja. Soja. Soja, pardon me. No problem. Daigo Tosa. He couldn't make it tonight either. Okay. Scott Thomas and Joe Sevilla to the fiber optic committee, study committee? I would, I, yeah, maybe rephrase the fiber optic study committee. Fiber optic study committee. Uh, effective immediately for term expiring uh, June 30th, 2025. One year? One, one year plus. I mean, by then you should have a pretty good sense. Okay. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Last chance. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. So I think the next thing is to either have town administrator or if I'm the liaison, I can organize the first meeting and mm -hmm. coordinate with everybody a good time. Probably, uh, we have probably got to tell Eve or two, they all have to be Oh yeah, you would have to get sworn in by the town clerk at some point mm -hmm. during the day when she's here. Be an official committee. Great. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Town policy on data and computer management. I take over on this one too? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so before I jump in, these two things, the next two agenda items, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, the town data policy, community management, and BADAR issues. Um, a little bit of backstory on this. I've spent the last couple weeks kind of digging into some of our IT issues in town, um, working with Andre a little bit, talking to some of the town hall employees that have been having issues. Um, first thing that came up about was um, we found a couple computers on the town's network, the domains, and able to get into the servers that were unmanaged from Andre, meaning they, they couldn't update them, they couldn't access them, they had no control over them. We were able to locate one of those devices locally, so we, we knew what that was, but the other device we had no clue who it belonged to, so I had them remove it just for security reasons. We didn't know what it was. Um, going through some of those lists, um, Andre came in, we were reviewing the, the, the devices, and while Andre was here, they were working in the assessor's office, and there was an, another computer issue going on where the assessors, again, couldn't reach VADAR. And that's how this whole data thing started. Barim from Andre looked into it, 
found out that the local network of computers, which is not tied to the internet, there are three networked computers together that share a separate hard drive. One of the hard drives was in pre-fail state, according to Verim from Andre. Um, needs to be replaced, the, the whole hard drive array. I asked him, you know, it's, it's in a, a RAID system, which is a data backup system. He says it can't be re repaired or re fixed individually. You take a hard drive out, put a new one in, and swap it. It can't be done. It's an old system that was kind of ad hoc together many years ago. It just needs to be replaced. Um, during that conversation with Barim, he was telling me that these three network computers, since they're not on the internet, they have no ability to manage from Entree, so they have no updates going to them, um, and the software on there is out of date and unsupported. We're running Microsoft Access 07, and a lot of this stuff requires new, new software. Mm -hmm. So it's unsupported now from Microsoft. It's going away. There's going to be any problems? Mm -hmm. SOL. So it got me thinking a lot about you know, our IT policies as a town. You know, there's a new um, bill coming out from the, uh, the legislature about data security and compliance. Um, and a lot of other towns are adopting data governance policies. So I don't have anything to present. I was kind of looking for the board's direction. Maybe, you know, I can work with the, the new incoming town administrator on a, a data governance mm -hmm. um, infrastructure and town hardware policy. You know, how we store the town's data, where it gets stored, and who has access to it. So these things kind of go hand in hand with the infrastructure. We need some updates, we need some maintenance. Some of it's not able to happen. And it's then other things, new software such as VADAR, we could bring it into the age where we can use everything cohesively, department to department, to make jobs run more efficiently. Is it also a bit of a consideration, as you alluded to, where there's one overarching Basically, who's in charge? Mm -hmm. Like you say, where you have some older systems, and somebody's got to be able to say, "Look, you need to replace that." Right. I know you're comfortable with it. There's a comfort level, but somebody's got to hate to say it, make the hard choice, and we have to go for it. We pay good money for a consultant. Right. And I think some of these other towns, through their their data governance policy, have a electronic um, management mm -hmm. um, head, and who's somebody's in charge of all the infrastructure mm -hmm. and know that they're able to facilitate you know rather than run, relying on our contractual agreements with Andre there's somebody that's actually in charge of inventory and data and hardware well, we have a time bomb here with these hard drives we really do the one that Barim was very concerned about this one hard drive that it, in, the whole unit needed to be replaced mm -hmm. and this is the one right now that they don't manage so they don't back it up mm -hmm. and where's that located in the clerk's office. The clerk's office. Okay. Now, is that dovetail into the next item on the agenda? Yes. Okay. I do see Kelly on one. And she'll. So, that failed, failing hard drive that's in pre fail state, according to Andre, is the one that hosts the local VADAR files. Mm -hmm. And the ones that, at the time when I was here, I physically saw it, they could not access them from their office because the, they, went, they went down. Mm -hmm. That is my backstory on that. Okay. And, and what, what is on this hard drive, the one that's about to fail? Do we know? I think they said it was about 20 gigs worth of VADAR files. So the successor, collector, yeah. treasurer files. Whatever they all communically are communitively used together. Yeah. Um, in talking with some of the other department heads, they use the cloud service, whereas this one's not in the cloud. Now there was talk about being backed up with a thumb, thumb drive, et cetera. And I think we're almost into a little larger than that can be. That, that is also goes into my data compliance thing, you know, data right. governance. You know, that's not the proper way to do a backup. Right. And it's unsecured assets. Mm -hmm. All right. So are you talking writing a policy and presenting that to the board? For I, I would like to work with Brian. I would like to work with the new town administrator on a policy mm -hmm. with the board. <coughs> And obviously, with suggestions as well. Mm -hmm. So, while you're working on the new, <laughs> while you're working on the new policy, what do we do with this? Well, something obviously needs to happen. I think that's where we, as a board, need to take charge of you know the town assets and decide what we need to do with it. Right. Okay. And can can Andre fix it? 
they can back it up and put it on a new hard drive, but it's mm -hmm. in the same state. It's, it's kicking the can down the road. Right. I mean, it's, right. a, it's the same thing, you know, a, a data compliance issue. Yeah. Right. So I guess, I guess I guess what I'm asking is, what do we need to do to fix it? Well, have we already told them to go ahead and fix the hardware? No, because they not under that direction. No, because it's it's in the clerk's office at the moment. But it's still hardware covered under our overarching Correct. contract, right? But I, I think the question was here. You know, um, we were we, supposed to get quotes. Right, but even if we said to go to the cloud thing, mm -hmm. that computer would still need to no. be fixed, right? No. Well, isn't the hard drive failing? It's. A storage drive it's a raid drive oh it's, it's just secondary it's just secondary okay. and that's where all the data stored so it's not a physical computer three computers tie into this hard drive mm -hmm. and they share the data off this one hard drive like a drobo or something like that basically it's it is a raid i know right. you heard in it yeah. a little bit at work yeah. but it's two laptop drives tethered together in an enclosure like not a drobo. It's, yeah. but it's, it's not a real device it's somebody oh. made it oh from what it, from what it looks at best. And from what the room was telling me, it was homemade. <laughs> All right, so are you looking for, we need to, we kick this down the road a bit, but I think we're at the point where we try to work together with everybody. And we were supposed to get but quotes think, too about a month or so ago. I understand, but I don't think we got those for whatever reason. We've got some information, but not, I did see some information from Kelly, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't see that being a huge increase in cost, looking at what we're talking about for security. Right. And I think there needs to be a directive coming from somebody to get this done. I, yes, I agree. I guess the question is, is the board, is the town administrator as the overseer of operations in the town hall or a combination? I think it's a common. I think it's the board directing the town administrator to. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that would be the logical yeah. sense. You know, you know, it's the policy of the board to to have secure mm -hmm. information. It's the policy of the board to have the different departments be able to communicate mm -hmm. with each other in a safe manner. And I think just for clarification, we're not trying to tell hell anybody to do their job. We just want to make sure that the stuff that we're responsible for, you know, security mm -hmm. data. You know the policies that yeah. we, we are adhering to need to be met. Okay. okay. Um, so I guess that dovetails into the question: Do we want to increase the budget or go forward with that increase in the Vedar system to put it completely on the cloud for all departments to use? I would say yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll make that motion that we uh, authorize the town use of Vedar to access from the cloud for all departments. I, like, I think I, I worry just like you said about the imminent, if you will. It's not, it's not a question of you know when you need it. There are two kind of types of people: those who back up and those who wish they backed up. Right. Right. You're looking for a time frame and how quickly it happens. Exactly. Um, I, be I believe this. while talking through Kelly, and if she's on, she may be able right. to talk better about it. That it would probably take a few days within a week to get it done. Mm -hmm. Okay. I okay. think we do. I'd like to say the motion to be direct the town administrator to start the implementation of everything being on the VADAR cloud. I'll amend the motion to that. Mm -hmm. So I would amend the motion to that. Okay, and I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's town policy, that's the VADAR issue. Municipal aggregation, what do we got there? Uh, that's something I know we talked about putting that on there. I do know that there's uh, some input from, I think somebody said maybe we could maybe invite some comment from Senator Oliveira's office. There, there, um, Senator Oliveira is, is uh, working with some other members of the legislature mm -hmm. to streamline the process. The process from the town side is article at the annual town meeting approval by the town meeting, then it goes to the DPU, which can take up to a year to approve it. And so they're focusing on the DPU and getting them to process, uh, especially with uh, electrical rates where they are in the Commonwealth. They're, they're focusing on getting the DPU to act uh, more quickly on these applications. Okay, through the chair, 
Can I reach out to uh, Jake and see if he's available next week, maybe, to discuss oh, yes. this? Okay. That's a good idea. All right. You want the senator in next? Yeah, yeah. I'll reach yeah, out to him. Yeah, yeah, and see if uh, he can come in. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, my letter to uh, double pull. <laughs> double space, double pull. <laughs> double pull. They, they, it was nice. There's a little, uh, there's a, hey. one sentence is a little awkward. I got to change it a little bit, but it's. No, it's, isn't he the double pole guy too? Who's that? Jake? Yes. Jake's right. the double pole guy too. Maybe we can get rid of two poles and one stone. <laughs> hey, Don doesn't like that kind of comment. <laughs> Uh, so, so what I would do is I would, yep. if this is with your approval, I would say I have the email addresses mm -hmm. of the people that I dealt with before with the sure. poll on, on Main Street and mm -hmm. send it to them and just tell them. I think we should just put them on notice that we're looking at this and to be sure. Exactly. To, you know, yeah. but, we're, we're perfect. Like the ones laying, right. on, yeah. laying on the ground all the way down Allen Street. Yeah, there. yeah. yeah. There's already a couple of double poles over there right now. Did you see them? Yeah, they're right. You see how they got them? They got them stacked on top of wood blocks. Uh, and, and, yeah, I was and, thinking, and, you know, wired together. Those new poles they have laying on the ground look shorter than the poles on the ground. You know, That's what I thought. My mother said, my mother, my wife said that too. I know when yeah. you look at it this way and this way, I mean, but you look at it. <laughs> no, it, they, they don't look, look like they, yeah. She they did. Look. She said, why are they getting new poles? Those are shorter. I mean, if you got to put them in the ground, you know, at least 10 feet, probably. Right. Yeah. You know? but, but they're done, they're bigger. They grow. <laughs> Water them a little no, bit. They're wood, right? They can, um, All right. Yes or no? I'm in favor of it. Yep. In the town. Okay. Good. All right. We'll do that. John, you have some fruit permits? Well, you know, the back. Barney, the back. Yeah. Okay. There are some food Johnny. permits. Yeah. Did you call him Johnny? Yeah. All right. There's two in your folder, yeah. Thank you so much. Just to piss him off. So, the Stout Pigeon Co Coffee Company. <laughs> Stout Pigeon. Stout Pigeon from Turner's Falls. Really? We'd like to have a one day food permit at the starting gate on March 23rd. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I like the name. What are they doing? What are they doing up there? Are they having some kind of. There is. There's this thing called Babes for a Cause. I've seen advertisement on Facebook for it. Uh, basically, almost like what e ERC five does, Don. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, they kind have of a grouping yeah, yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. They've had that feast for the East, things like that. Up Babes there. for a yeah. cause. No. Don't, right. don't go there. Okay. <laughs> so there's a second uh, second one also on March 23rd. The Erickson Farm from East Long Meadow on Porter Road needs a one day permit for, also for that event oh. at the starting gate. So moved. Second. It's all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, we have, uh, do we have a town administrator report? We do. Um, uh, it's, do you have copies? Yes. Okay. Uh, I joined the Ambulance Oversight Committee on the 20th. Um, the rebate this year will be $59,000. The committee would like Bruiser. me to ask the selectmen if they would like a recommendation for uh, ambulance services in the new fiscal year. The options would be another one-year extension of the existing contract with Action Ambulance, new three-year contract, um, and uh, whatever else you might choose to do, uh, do bidding or whatever. Um, but it's time to get started on, on the contract that's going to be expiring on, on June the 30th. Um, the committee asked action for pricing for a new one-year extension and for a new three-year three, three year contract, and that pricing will be available in two weeks. So I would think you, I don't know if you want to make a decision tonight, but yeah. without any information. So anyway, it was a positive meeting, and uh, a number of the issues that... Uh, were brought up in earlier meetings under this contract and seem to have been resolved. Uh, 
I'm also involved uh, now with uh, the transition, uh, making sure that the new administrator knows all the passwords, for example, um, and all the accounts that we have, um, <clears throat> and some of the, we're gonna go through my, um, my email drive to talk about all the various activities that are going on and have gone on. Um, we don't have that set up yet, but I'm hoping that we can do it Wednesday when the new administrator is going to be here in person to talk to uh, our department heads and staff. I'd like to do it after that. Uh, if he, I know he has some issues this coming week. If he can't do that, then I'll, I'll do it uh, when he arrives on Monday the, the 11th. Um, also, I, th I think you have some information from town council uh, reg regarding the settlement with uh, 3A 3M and the DuPont company on PFAS chemicals. Uh, there was, a, I saw John put out an email, it's about a hundred bucks, but then well, you give up. What was, you know, yeah. if you look at the total number and divide it by every. That's right, you know, every, in all, all. You like that op opioid number. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're not funding the water district with this. <laughs> no, um, I don't think so. And also you'd give up your, the, the condition is you give up your rights to pursue legal action in the future. So. Like um, the fight in the Hudson, right? Don? So, yeah. 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 So. <clears throat> I am a third generation employee of the DuPont company. So I won't offer any recommendations. Oh. Summer job. No a guy. <laughs> that was brooming floors and opening packages. So I, I would have to recuse myself. <laughs> Stock. Worse than that. <laughs> Worse than that. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's not for public knowledge right now. Yeah. Then meet with the highway superintendent regarding the personnel issue. And again, Ann Gobi's weekly meetings. I find very useful and will encourage the new TA to continue. Uh, it's about 20 minutes on Wednesdays or Thursdays and well worthwhile. So that's the report. Like the report? Uh, big, we had a uh, building committee meeting this morning at the uh, police department. Thank you, Scott, for making the room available. Um, so going forward, the committee would like to attend our meeting next week to talk about having a <coughs> forum for basically the new senior center expansion proposal and to review potential dates and locations with the select board. If we could put that on the agenda. Uh, planning board has a public hearing on this Wednesday. Uh, should be fairly well attended. Um, I did make known to the board, as we know, our Zoom operator didn't really stay. I did ask Becky if there was anybody else available on the work catch work program. Nobody has come forward yet, but she will re-advertise. I would suggest to the board that we put it out there as a paid position. I mean, we're seeing more and more of it. Yeah. I think it, you know, Bob's been doing a great job, but you know, for Brian coming on, having somebody here for that, with ConCom may want, I mean, they're gonna be pretty busy. They go, they go. Planning would be busy. I think having somebody, we can pretty much guarantee one to two sessions a week going forward. I don't think, I think it's a job that's perfectly suited for somebody of our age, if you will, that doesn't have children commitment at night with homework, et cetera. And with the way it's going nowadays, many more of our people of our age are used to Zoom. They really are. Be What's going on? So. Our age. Hmm? Be careful with that people are. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you way out here. What? Yeah. <laughs> Don, um, can you pass that? Back? <laughs> huh? So, uh, huh? What? What? Yeah. what? What? Where are we? So, yeah, so, <laughs> that'll be. Uh, so for Wednesday night, I volunteered to 
help them with Zoom on Wednesday. What about like an intern from the, the school or something like that? Would that be a option? Happened. I mean, we had that. We had one well, before, but that then. didn't work too well either because of sure. other school commitments. Her now, she well, moved to Suffield well. while attending Minichog. Yeah. And just going back and forth was. Is you know, there another person that might be in that I program? think we could reach out, just, but for right now, the immediate need was right, Wednesday. Right. Immediate need, yeah, for sure, right. but, you know, just to do the due diligence. And that might be safe. something Lauren could reach out to uh, people at the school as well as perhaps, perhaps preparing uh, something for the Times. Sure. Um, Housing Authority, we, there is talk of a CPA uh, request for the spring, but that may push to the fall as well, and I let Doug know about that. CPA, the projects are done at the Academy Hall. Anybody wants to go in back, see the fence, it won't fall in. Uh, no one has tested the fire escape yet. Let's <laughs> hope that stays that way. I have nothing to report. Uh, I met with the uh, part of the master plan committee on uh, the 21st and just was to put together some information to be sent to the consultant. We bunch of things together. The planning committee is still licking their wounds and will be meeting on, on March 5th. <laughs> With a, with a new YouTube opportunity, hopefully. Yeah. That, was, that was probably the worst part, the fact that yeah, the first they posted a lot, it, yeah. yeah. And then they post it, anyhow. All right, I'll uh, entertain a motion to go into executive discuss session to, uh, for the purposes of discussing collective bargaining with the police patrolman's union, that's under exemption three, and under exemption two for it to discuss the collective uh, bargaining with the uh, uh, non-union personnel, which would be the police chief, uh, to do it in public would be undermine the board's strategy. Without a return to open session. Without a return to open session, we will adjourn to the cone of silence. The selectman's office? Yes. Okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Donald Donald I. Well, Donald Davenport, I. Right. Thank you all. Thank you all for checking in.